Okay, welcome to day three of four of Stars and Galaxies. Today we are going to learn about star life cycle. Our unit is Stars and Galaxies, and once again our topic is star life cycles. So stars are like humans. They have, they change over their lifespan. Day three of four. <clears throat> Today we're going to learn the difference between the life cycle of a massive blue main sequence star and compare that life cycle with that of our yellow main sequence star like our sun. So we're going to compare the life cycle of two stars. How are they similar? How are they different? And then to understand how nucleosynthesis occurs in stars. <clears throat> okay, so here we go. Remember to pause this video anytime you need to write things down. Here we go. So your quick write for five points. What do you think will happen to our sun when it runs out of hydrogen fuel? Everything around us is made of elements. Where do you think these elements are made? And why do you think some stars become black holes and other stars, like our sun, do not? <clears throat> okay, feel free to pause this. We're going to keep going. All right, star size. All stars form in a nebula. And a star will begin its main sequence phase when hydrogen fusion begins. So it is officially a star when hydrogen fusion begins. Okay, so once that star starts turn, churning out energy and shining brightly, it is a star. Like our sun here. A yellow star. But what determines the size of a star? Okay. In the, in the sun is a core. <clears throat> Gravity always wants to crush the star. Okay, so why doesn't it? Well, the answer is found through the outward pressure or force of energy from fusion, which balances out the inward force of gravity. This keeps the star in a state of equilibrium or balance. Okay, <clears throat> so gravity wants to pull the star in. Fusion wants to push the star back. <clears throat> This determines the size of our star, like our sun here. The size of our sun is determined between the balance of gravity and the fusion, the energy, pushing outward. Okay. So, what determines the size of a main sequence star for your notes? Once again, write the question in the question section. Everything under the question a balance between the blank pool of gravity and the outward push of energy created by fusion goes in your answer section. Read the passage. Determine which word in the answer bank best completes the sentence here. Go ahead and pause this and write this down, and I'm going to move on. <clears throat> okay, temperature and pressure affect star life. So temperature and pressure... Let's look at a blue star. Large, massive blue stars have short lives because they have higher pressures and temperatures in the core. Therefore, they run through their hydrogen fuel source faster. Think of it as like it's a gas tank, right? Because these stars are hotter and their pressures are greater, they burn through their energy source faster. You think, oh, they're big, they have more hydrogen, right? Well, this is true, but they are so much hotter and they have so much more pressure in their core that they burn through their hydrogen fuels faster. Therefore, they have short lives. Blue stars don't live long. On the other hand, on the other extreme, okay, small red dwarf stars have long lives because they are very, very, very cool stars. And therefore, they don't burn through their hydrogen fuel source as fast as a blue main sequence star okay so small red dwarf stars have extremely long lives we're talking like 20 billion years we believe in fact all the red dwarf stars we look out and we see in the night sky have been around since the beginning of our universe <clears throat> and then stars like our sun once again kind of have average lives okay stars like our sun have average lives because they're not that hot they're not as cool as a red dwarf star but they're not as hot as a blue main sequence star so they're kind of average in temperature and pressure and therefore they burn through their hydrogen fuel supply kind of in an average way 
okay? So we have blue stars with extremely short lives. We're talking on the on one billion years, and then we have red dwarf stars, which have lifespans of about 20 billion years, and then stars like our sun, which have a total lifespan of about 10 billion years. So there you have it. On your notes, once again, write the question in the question section. Everything below the question goes in the answer section. So everything you see here, okay? Use the answer bank to complete the sentence. Go ahead and pause while you write this down. Here we go. All right, now here's where things get a little confusing. So try to follow along. This is a massive blue star life cycle. Let's look at a blue star. Okay, In a massive blue star's core, hydrogen fuses together to form helium for most of its main sequence life. Okay, So it's smashing hydrogen atoms to make helium, and that's fusion, and energy is produced. Okay, Eventually, hydrogen starts to run out, and helium accumulates in its core. So you get more and more helium in its core. <clears throat> As a result, gravity, remember, gravity is always trying to crush the star. As a result, gravity wants to crush the star. And what happens is, okay, the temperatures actually increase. And the star begins now, it's like, well, I have all this helium. I might as well burn helium now and fuse helium into carbon. Okay, so it smashes helium atoms together to make the next heavier element, carbon. And once again, this is fusion and energy is still released and the star is still burning. Over time, though, the outward pressure or force of energy from fusion becomes stronger. So fusion pushes back. Remember the balance between gravity and the outward force of fusion. So fusion pushes back and is now stronger than the inward force of gravity. And the star begins to swell and cool, changing its color in the process. Okay. So the star is no longer in the main sequence phase. It is getting near closer to the end of its life once it starts doing this. <clears throat> Here we go. Temperatures continue to increase in the core, and the star begins fusing now carbon into oxygen. So it smashes carbon atoms together to make the next heaviest element, oxygen. So at this point, the star is now what we call a supergiant. These are colossal stars. The biggest stars in our night sky, in our universe, are called supergiants. But fusion doesn't just stop yet. Okay, It's near the end of its life cycle. It's desperate. It's fusing carbon into oxygen. <clears throat> it's slowly running out of energy. So as temperatures continue to increase... It gets hotter and hotter and hotter in the core. The star will now be begin fusing oxygen into iron. Okay. Near the end of its life, the blue massive star resembles an onion. If you were to slice open a star, it would have different layers with different elements. Okay. So the lighter ones are on the outside and the heavier elements are on the... They sink to the bottom. Okay. So iron in the center of the star, okay? So the lightest elements all the way to the heavier elements in the center. This process is called nucleosynthesis. It's a big word, don't let it scare you, okay? It it's means that stars create lighter elements, that lighter elements are created into heavier elements through fusion in a star, that's all. Nucleosynthesis means, it just means that stars took hydrogen, the lighter element, and created all these heavier elements in a star, okay? through fusion. So, in massive blue stars, elements up to the size of iron, elements 26, are created through fusion on the periodic table. Okay, so all the stars up to elements 26 were created through fusion. Okay. At a certain temperature, fusion can no longer occur, though, and the outward energy stops 
and at this point, gravity takes over and crushes the star. Remember, if fusion stops, fusion is in is holding the star in balance. If you take away that fusion force, gravity takes over and crushes the star. Iron is like the death of a star. You can think of iron as the death of a star because at a certain temperature and pressure, iron can no longer be fused into heavier elements. The process becomes the fusion process becomes inefficient and actually absorbs energy rather than releases energy. So gravity takes over and crushes the star. The star explodes into a supernova. That is an exploding star. The most energetic events in our universe are an exploding star. <clears throat> Depending upon the star's initial mass, or size if you think of it that way, it will end up as either a neutron star or black hole. So really big blue stars will become black holes okay but smaller blue massive stars their fate will lead to a neutron star which are some of the weirdest most interesting things in the universe okay also known as pulsars because the way they go around okay so we have black holes and neutron stars so the fate of a blue star will either be a black hole or a neutron star depending upon its initial size all right, so when the star explodes, though, it blasts all the elements into space, seeding the universe with elements to make new stars, planets, people, and buildings. Guess what was here before our solar system? A blue massive star was here before our solar system. It exploded, okay? It collapsed and exploded, and it seeded our universe with the stars or with, with elements, Okay? And out of those elements became the new planets, became our new sun. Okay, So supernovas are so hot and bright, they produce all other elements heavier than iron. Okay, These are such energetic events that they can produce all the heavier elements. These are the rare elements. right? Here's gold. So gold, platinum, lead, all these heavier elements were created and from a supernova. So if you have a gold ring, your ring was made from a supernova. Okay. So what is nucleosynthesis? Okay. That what is nucleosynthesis goes in the question section. Everything under the question goes set, goes in your answer section. Please read the passage. Use the answer bank to determine which wor which words best complete the sentence. Go ahead and pause this while you write, okay? We're going to move on. <clears throat> All right, our sun, our yellow sun-like star. Let's see what happens, what's going to happen to our sun here. Our sun's core is right now is fusing hydrogen into helium, and we get energy from the sun sunlight radiation right so this is good we like our sun keeps us warm and cozy in our earth a happy place so right now our sun is fusing hydrogen into helium and it will do this for its 10 billion year old main sequence life it'll do this for another four and a half billion years old billion years because it's halfway through its life throughout this time though right now our sun is accumulating helium in its core okay as a result gravity will crush the star Okay, gravity wants to, wants to crush the star, excuse me. Pressures and temperatures increase. So near the end of its life, after about 10 billion years, okay, our sun will begin fusing helium into carbon. It will get hotter. And as a result, it will, because it's hotter, it can now fuse helium into carbon. Over time, the outward pressure or force of energy from fusion becomes stronger than the inward force of gravity, and the star begins to swell and cool, changing its color in the process. So in about 4 billion years, this is what's going to happen to our sun. Okay, It's going to fuse helium into carbon, and it's going to swell into a large star, Okay, and it will start fusing carbon into oxygen now. So temperatures continue to increase in the core 
and the star will begin. It's it's so hot now. It has all this carbon on hand. It can now fuse because it's hot. It can now fuse carbon into oxygen. At this point, the star is now a red giant. So in about 10 billion years, or another four and a half billion years, our sun will become a red giant. Okay, throughout. Remember, our sun is about four and a half billion years old. In another four and a half billion years, five billion years, our sun is going to heat up and become a red giant star. Okay, unlike a blue star, though, temperatures and pressures are not high enough to produce iron through fusion. Fusion stops at oxygen. So our sun, oxygen is the death of our star. Okay, what you're breathing right now, oxygen, it will kill our sun. Okay. Because it's just like a blue star. It's just not hot enough. And the process is inefficient. And it starts absorbing energy rather than releasing energy. Well, and hopefully you're guessing what's going to happen next. Fusion stops. What force takes over? That's right. Gravity. Okay. Instabilities in the balance between gravity and the outward force of pressure of fusion result in abrupt explosions. But it's not really a supernova explosion. Okay. So, these abrupt explosions, okay, blow the outer layers of the star away, this red giant star, okay? The result is what we call a planetary nebula. These abrupt explosions lead to what is called a planetary nebula. At the center of this planetary nebula is a hot white glowing core with oxygen, okay, and carbon. And this is what we call a white dwarf star. So over time, though, eventually these gases are expelled, leaving behind a white dwarf star. So eventually these gases will fade away. And a white dwarf star is what remains of an average star like our sun after running out of fuel. Okay, It's about the size of Earth, these white dwarf stars. And we see these out in space. These are the glowing, okay, hot cores of a red giant. It's what remains after a planetary nebula. Okay, So, for your notes, that's a lot of information. Don't worry, we're just going to summarize the life cycle here. So write your question in the question section. Write your answer here below in the answer section. Don't forget to fill in the correct words here. Okay. So remember, all stars are born in a nebula. They became main sequence stars for most of their lives. And a blue star becomes a supergiant, supernova, black hole, or what kind of star? A yellow star. Our star formed in a nebula became a main sequence yellow star. Red giant, planetary nebula, and then a what kind of star? Go ahead and pause this while you write, please. I'm going to move on. Okay, that's it. Summarize. What I would like you to do is you can just draw the boxes if you want. Draw a little flow chart here. I would really like it if you can draw the pictures, though, because pictures will really help you remember it better along with labels. So draw pictures and labels, and then, using your answer bank, determine what goes in these boxes here. Okay, so hopefully you'll get that done. And then write down below here, our sun has a blank billion-year-old lifespan, a total billion-year-old lifespan. Okay, very important that you know how the total lifespan of our sun and that we're about halfway through its life right now. All right, so go ahead and pause that while you complete your summaries. Remember, your summary boxes need to fill up. So if you don't fill it up all the way, then maybe you should write a little bit more. Go back and look at what you have written down. Okay, so I am going to expect you to know for the test the difference between the life cycle of a yellow star like our sun and a blue massive star. All right, thanks for listening. Go ahead and hit pause. You guys have a good night.